Interspecies reveals actually aired. Honestly, despite how many boundaries this pushed and how explicit it was, oh I really found this to be a funny comedy that was just me and the boys hang out made for degenerates by degenerates. Uh, it's just a genuinely good laugh, oh meaning Lord. this was one of the first ever I could watch purely for academic purposes. For academic purposes, fat. Yo. Usual... You nasty. Sakurai said, the man behind the camera, director, here with another Giggle reaction, best anime 2020. Now, this is going to be interesting. This year of anime is the first official year where we was dealing with the Roni. Y'all might not remember, but the Roni is called from the last year, but it was this year where it really start piecing us up. Uh, I'm interested. Uh, I, I forget what even came out this season, but the real question is, right? For best anime 2020, will we see some shows that could have potentially been number one, top five, fall to the wayside because they hit production issues, because they hit a stoppage? Or are we seeing more shows that were kind of already done and they just happened to drop during this time? I will also say everybody was inside around this year, so there's a lot more eyes on anime than usual, at least in my opinion, including my own eyes glued to the new stuff. So we're going to jump into this. I'm excited to see what Gigu got cooking up. I'm excited to go down memory lane once again to see what came out in that first year wheels all inside some of us dealing with demons some of us being demons some of us catching demons it, it depends what side of the spectrum you were on i guess really <laughs> i was exercising a demon but that's just me Anyways, yeah, we're gonna hop into this. Uh, comment down below, what was your favorite anime from the 2020 year? Would you put at number one? I'm interested to see what Gigu's gonna say too, so. The elephant in the room to get it over with. You know it, I know it. 2020 the was just the Game of Thrones season eight of years. Somehow, wow. the managed to make this an unending barrage of nightmarish plot twists even if <laughs> my dumbline couldn't see fucking going. <laughs> making it feel like the most boring filler arc of my life. But hey, at least we had feel anime. that. Kind of. I'll be honest. I've been marathoning through as much anime as I could for the past month, trying to catch up with the year, but even Three then, zero, I've okay. watched way less than I usually would. I don't Ooh, think I JJK have enough to talk about the best of respective categories like I usually would. So, instead, I'm just going to revert back to some old school YouTube clickbait and do my top anime I've seen this year. Uh, uh, get to that yeah, that's logo, classic. Quick rundown of all the other things I wanted to talk about that happened this year. Studio Passion started 2020 by drawing the line between hentai and anime with invisible ink. Oh. Uh, it's just straight up aired a hentai scene, which I constantly have to remind people happened earlier in the year, not in 1947. A revolution oh was started against Mao. Funimation yeeted out faster than you could say on each and my hips are moving by themselves. The anime oh my God. the plays, and in between all this, interspecies reviews actually aired. Honestly, despite how many boundaries this pushed and how explicit it was, oh I really found this to be a funny comedy that was just me and the boys hang out in a hentai made for degenerates by degenerates. Uh, it's just a genuinely good laugh, oh meaning Lord. this was one of the first ever hentai you could watch purely for academic purposes. For academic purposes, fat. Aside from yep. the usual best girl <laughs> I was waiting for it. We have several contenders Dead. for worst girl of the year. In one corner, we have Rachel from Tower of God, and in the other, Mami from Rent-A-Girlfriend. And I mean, what can I you say neither. about the competition? Rachel was a character that felt entitled while happily taking advantage of the people around her to reach her goal. But in Boo. the moments that really mattered, spat on everything she was given, giving the biggest middle finger any anime character has given in years. And even further in the webtoon, she continues down this path. Literally ruining lives and becoming one of the most truly decrepit and vile female characters I've ever had the displeasure of. Oh my of god, experience. really? But on the other hand, Mummy did lead some guy on. Twitter decided it was now illegal uh, for anyone below 5'3 to possess breasts. Beastars, oh recent success on Netflix, really changed a lot of perception when it came to 3D anime, and I'm sure Netflix was sitting there like, damn, we want more of this. Uh, so, what they do? Oh boy. Oh my god, yes, I was thinking the same thing that I have. I honestly don't know what world I'm in where this is a real scene from Ghost in the Shell, not some Benny Hills... Ghost in the shit, Shell? But at least they're carrying on the Ghost in the Shell spirit, tackling deep That's themes so of technological extra. existentialism in episodes like Edgelord, the revolution of the 14-year-olds. What? I repeat, Edgelord, the revolution of the 14-year-olds. Which I assure you is an actual mm. Gits episode and not a rejected PewDiePie video. I can't wait for season two when what? we get Standalone Complex episode 19, Virgin Army, Revenge uh. of the Pog Champs. Shut up. Oh now. my god. It honestly feel like there was a big hole this year in terms of anime fights. Normally some of the biggest moments in the year of anime are defined by some oh my of the god. fights. And this year just felt like we didn't have too many to pick from. Probably my biggest disappointment was God of High School, which somehow did the impossible what? and made me not 
about the tournament arc? How the fuck do you do that, God of High School? Call it a poor oh adaptation, rush pacing, bland plot or characters, but this was the one show I really, really, really But there was boxing. Run, but couldn't. As hard as I tried, I just couldn't get invested in it, and it hurts me showing these clips because I can't think of another time I got to see such beautifully animated and intense fight sequences that That's I what couldn't give less a shit about. Watching okay. this show, it felt like watching the grown-up version of those fucking stick figure fighting flash videos I thought were the shit. Okay. I honestly feel the best way to enjoy this anime is just to watch the fight sequences out of context on YouTube because you'd get the same amount of enjoyment. But yeah, it's still up yeah. there as some of the best fights of the year for just how technically impressive they were. But oh, then, gorgeous. Bro. The best anime fights I saw this year not wasn't based. even from an anime. But Time out, honestly. He's he's giving a real base take right now. Like God of High School, I I won't defend it in any way, in any terms, right? But the animation was good. The fight scenes are awesome. But he's right. They just really didn't make you give a fuck in the slightest. It was I, at first I was like, yo, this might be it for the season, and then it was maybe like. I would say eight episodes in, I was like, yeah, it might not be it for the season. They did some real interesting things direction-wise. You know, the way they decided to adapt and tell the story was very, very interesting. And an, and it was non it was both non-linear and interesting. But the payoffs just weren't there. Got a high school, I can see why it's a disappointment. I was about to say, wait, wait, wait. We're just talking about pure boxing. You can't talk shit about God of High School, but then he went on to clarify, boxing was fire, but you had no reason to care about the boxing. Just watch the fights. And honestly, I ain't gonna hold you. God of High School is one of the shows, you could just watch the fights and you're good. Like, you're not gonna know why this fight's important, but you're good. Sad. The legendary team that worked on the Naruto and Sasuke vs Momoshiki fight randomly showed up in a Ooh. Chinese anime and just casually flexed on everyone by showcasing one of oh the best God. animated sequences in all of 2020. Starting oh, with the I've seen this clip. Running scene that absolutely dropped my jaw on the floor, it then proceeds to transition into an insane 1v3 yeah. hand to hand martial arts brawl that is absolutely dripping in style and swagger. Yeah, I mean, you put just my bottle look how away. fucking cool this is. You got all this fancy footwork, the absolute bravado yeah. of these exchanges, and then oh he has the God. fucking audacity to just grab his hand. Oh god, it's so cool! You can tell the team nah, has a genuine gangster. passion for martial arts in both real life and on film because it doesn't seem like anyone is even close to touching them when it comes to Oh, he's a come here, boy! This wasn't just cool for an hour. Oh, you're fight. dead. It's just a badass martial arts fight, period. The show is Hitori no Shita, the outcast, by Thank the way. you. Alright, let's get down to brass Thank taxes. You. When you hear about a show that starts off with a guy getting hit with a truck that ends on <gasps> one of my favorite anime of the year list, I'm sure everyone's first thought is, is oh great, another shitty isekai, Gigak mm. staying on brand as usual, uh. rest assured. Tony Kawa Over the Moon for You is the furthest thing you'd expect me to like. A short, sweet, cute, wholesome story about a simple domestic romance. Wait. Yeah. In the modern oh times God. of anime titties dominating the timeline, anime and hentai deciding it's one and the same, and the world being taken over with degeneracy, it's refreshing uh, uh, to find a nice channel? Christian anime with nice Christian values. Tony Kawa is the rehabilitation what? needed for all of those who have once been put into horny jail. It's all of us. There's no complicated dramas, no love triangles, no relationships that need to be prefaced that they're not related by blood, just a story uh, of an actual decent responsible human being falling in love with one of the few waifus in anime that, um, is actually a waifu. Watching Tony Wait, Kawa what do you mean by that? Bath after a long day at work, you feel like your soul is cleansed whenever you finish an episode. It'll Ooh, cure your depression sweet. and give it right back to you when you remember that you'll never get a relationship like this. Shut up. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> it was! It was. It was. The GOAT. Top three rom com of all time. Oh, I thought I got debated. There's a lot of cheek. Like your summer is still good. Oh, this is like that quick. Ever since my last video about Index and Railgun over two years ago, your boy's been pretty quiet about the franchise as a whole. And What's index? well, that's my because magical index? when JC Staff adapts an anime, God flips a coin. Would it land heads like for the Corner Super movie? Or would oh it land God. tails like for One Punch Man 2, the clusterfuck of Index 3, or the underwhelming accelerator? Yeah, I'm watching all 
But for some unknown reason, uh. science still hasn't been able to solve. Whenever they touch anything related to Railgun, it is nothing but heads, heads, and heads. Railgun somehow oh, continues to be stunning. far and beyond the best thing the franchise has going for it when it comes to the anime, which kind of makes sense. With the Impact series having a far greater plot, struggling a bigger cast, squeezing way more story arcs into a single season, it's no wonder that the more focused world of Railgun means the spin-off series outshines the mainline. And, Damn. well, it seems it like looks effortless. Staff knew this too, because unlike their other recent adaptations, this is the best the franchise has looked since, well, Railgun. The great is she animation is back, a point? a more down-to-earth story, it's got all the level 5s going at it. This is everything Tawaru fans could hope for, not forgetting it's nice to see the return of Railgun. everyone's favourite character, CGI Wind Turbines, baby, oh yeah. Oh my god. Wow, JJK's down at number 6? I always feel a bit cheap for putting a hot new shonen on the top of my favorites list because to me it kind of feels like I'm saying yes. I That's do enjoy vanilla ice cream, eating white bread, and saying Rem is my waifu. But my god, Ugh, the last one. is doing something right, it is doing something right. Watching this first call of Jujutsu Kaisen kind of felt like you discovered that YouTube channel under 10,000 subscribers that you knew was just waiting to blow up. It's a shonen that isn't afraid to wear its influence on its sleeves, but is confident enough in its own abilities to still give you a fresh experience, and it does. You can see the it is. being laid for a truly amazing show because it just seems to have everything going for it. The characters are fresh and likable, the fights have a nice balance between interesting power systems and just pure animation Ooh. flexing. Gojo's eyes make me question my sexuality as much as uh. I stole for his dick, and it has an ending Whoa, wait, who's? my dad's belt. I feel like it's just waiting for that one big moment, that one big fight to truly take it up to the big leagues, because with Demon Slayer coming back you don't think... from literally kicking everyone's ass, Jesus fucking Christ, oh 54 million? The sales gap could part the Red Sea. I can't Damn! Really I'm sorry, it's Demon Slayer people. The big boys table I wasn't familiar with your game. Big three? Big five? Big seven? Now bump that! It's big me! Dead. This year, the domestic girlfriend manga ended and it left a massive hole in my heart. Domestic Where girlfriend was I gonna manga. get my fix of a car crash filled romance story now? Mm -hmm. How could anything fill the gap this master? Drugs? Left? I like that. When I finally get some good taste in anime oh god i'm so worried luckily rent a girlfriend started airing and it all went tumbling down again this unironically became the show i was most excited to catch up to every week unironically yes, fuck you i was more excited for this romance than kaguya what can i say you can take the man okay. out of the trash but you can't take the trash out of the man it's Facts. another romance anime that follows the formula by the book but sometimes you just find a show that contains every stupid eye-rolling cliche you've ever complained about but somehow uh. it balances them all in a way that just works i don't know what it is is about seeing people going through a train wreck of a romance situation that's just so addicting to watch. You know what I did? I went on Grinder, and dude, I was a hit on Grinder, by the way. What? I was a hit on Grinder almost instantly. But then I literally saw my dad. Rent a girlfriend was oh. just that perfect kind of a train wreck. It may not be high oh entertainment, God. but it knows how to keep you watching. You may be infuriated watching this living breath moment in action. You may be screaming at the screen for him to leave his hoe on the streets. You may want to buy oh this guy God. a fucking pint for just telling it how it is, but by God, you just got to click on the next episode for this morbid curiosity just to see how many more L's a single man can take. Oh my God. L's. Jesus Christ. Virgin's gonna virgin? Oh my god. Nah, I gotta. We gotta fight or I'm gonna alt that four. Also, when was the last time we had clear. I'd get an honorary citizenship to Australia. Damn, that's a lot. Cunt. And it hurts me that for some reason, <laughs> I still say <laughs> Mommy is alright. And I genuinely don't know if they're just trolling or if I've just interacted with a psychopath. Oh like, come God. on, guys. You're joking. You gotta be joking. How can right? she There's be no that way bad? you're not joking. You know what, don't ask a good that. salesman can sell ice to Eskimos and here, rent a girlfriend is casually selling trash to garbage men. <laughs> oh my God. Time out. Okay. I ain't gonna lie. I've been hearing a lot of discourse about Rent a Girlfriend. I've seen a few clips here and there. Everybody says Rent a Girlfriend is terrible, but I see in pockets of people saying it's terrible. There's people who's like, no, you should watch it though. They're like, no, 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 hear me out. It's bad, but you should watch it. I don't know. Giggle made that shit sound fun. It sounds like a good trash show. He said you can't take the you can take the trash out the man, but you can't take the man out the trash or something to that nature. I'm a bit of a trash man myself, and I 
two, and I really have a good appreciation for rom coms. But everything, even the clips that I've seen of Rent a Girlfriend, I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? And I can see why some people find it annoying because you can say one thing specifically that re- that made me realize the reason a lot of people might not like it. He said it's because it follows every trope that you could think of. It pops up. It's very cliche and probably predictable as hell. And people don't want tropes cliched and predictable. That's way too many things in one that is negative, negative, negative. However, if it's cliched, has every trope and it's predictable, but it still does a good job on the story, I feel like it's worth watching. Because sometimes the best show is like kind of a parody. Maybe I'm viewing it, maybe, mm, I don't know. I might be thinking too hard, whatever. Run a girlfriend, should I watch it? Comment down below if you've made it this far. I said run a girlfriend, right? Yeah, not domestic rent. I have this really strange addiction on YouTube about watching videos on subjects I have absolutely no knowledge in because beyond mm. finding content centered around my hobbies, I find it fascinating watching passionate people present their interests because sometimes a bit of that passion can rub off onto you. There's just something magical about mm. watching people do the things they love and this is exactly how I felt watching Keep Your Hands Off Azuken. Masaki Yuasa essentially just made mm. a 12 episode personal love letter to animation and you can feel that passion oh, through every I saw this. single frame of this show. Azuken was so strongly imbued with such an overwhelming excitement for the art form that it was infectious. Even if he had zero interest in it, you don't need to have ever tried making an anime, anime because anyone who's worked on something creative I'm sure has a little bit of all three of the girls fighting inside you whenever you work on a new project. The one yeah. who thinks up wild ideas you may or may not actually be able to do, the one uh. who wants the project to be perfect and won't settle for anything less, and the one who has resting bruh face. The constant struggle uh. of having a vision you want to be realized versus the practicality of achieving it in a reasonable time frame while also not forgetting uh. the economics of labor was something I deeply related to, but what really I shines me is Yuasa's pure love for animation. There's this episode where one of the girls sees her grandma throwing tea and something about the way it looked fascinates her. She does it again and again, over and over, cleaning up and throwing more tea, trying to recreate every little detail, every little movement, until eventually this random childhood story would be translated into an animation cut that would appear in their anime for less than a second. Yet somehow this one little meaningless cut conveyed a sense of personal love that struck a deep chord with me. If there was something magical about the art of animation, Yuasa definitely showcased it here. I like that. I like that. I like that. I love when artists and cinematically people After take references and make it of dope. On Titan and Vinland Saga, watching Grey Pretender made me wonder if Studio Witch should be reported for aimbotting because right now uh, these motherfuckers just don't miss. Yeah. Well, we don't normally see an anime. Studio so Witch been on Luke fire, bro. And, well. That's about it. But I am not overstating it when I say Great Pretender is the greatest heist anime since Lupin the Third. I've heard people say to watch Great Pretender. Said, following a group of professional swindlers who are like the modern day Robin Hoods, except oh, they Giga steal also from the rich and give to, to themselves. themselves. Hell yeah, like baby. A truly triple A anime production. The unique genres, the gorgeous color palettes, and allowing me to officially say that Freddie Mercury is in an anime OST. But most of all, it was refreshing oh. to have an anime that truly felt international. Not only did we get a wider range of settings globally from LA, London, Burger. Shanghai, France, Singapore, and Tokyo, hustling drugs, hustling gambling, hustling world famous paintings from painters everyone nah, knows about. Definitely. Them. <laughs> But the worldwide feeling was reflected in the characters themselves. Way more attention to detail was given to the characters speaking different languages and how fluent they should actually sound, as opposed to most other shows where it just felt like they just got a random guy off the streets. Native voice actors were used to dub not only characters in their respective countries, but also the main cast too. It really looks oh, like they used this medium to its full advantage to make it feel like oh these were truly God. well-traveled, multilingual characters, which can often be a challenge to pull Impressive. off in movies. They call him Samurai. He speaks fluent Japanese. What does katana mean? It means Japanese sword. Uh, Samurai Cat! Shut the fuck up. The year until the last two episodes happened. Alright, this oh, is going to be my only no. chance, so I really need to rant about this ending. So I if you don't want to be spoiled, skip to the timestamp here, because I really need to get this off my chest. Nah, let's right? hear it. I'm good. Everyone good? Yeah. 
Okay, so I know this is meant to be a fun show not to be taken too seriously, but this ending took my suspension of disbelief, stretched it to bloody Narnia, and then shot into the fucking stratosphere. Oh my god. So somehow, they built an entire building in the middle of nowhere, and none of the marks didn't question the fact that they randomly passed out and sometimes woke up in a completely different vehicle. Dorothy was alive all this time, and now all their old targets who we've spent episodes building up to be fucking detestable shitbags are now all helping them and a buddy buddy? Like, how the hell did they pull that off? Yeah, so I know oh, we yeah, stole a hundred yeah. million dollars off you and completely ruined your life, but uh, wanna help us out on this job? Well, what's in it for me? We'll put you on a boat where you can reminisce about the time you got scammed by us. Well, even though you're a group of con men who've lied and oh backstabbed me before, I see absolutely no reason I can't trust Damn, you. Damn, that but sucks. Worse than, worse than all that. Worse? They already had both targets drugged unconscious with their money in hand, which essentially made everything they did here Fucking pointless. Like, I get there needed to be uh, some kind of payback scheme other than just taking the money and running, but you're okay. telling me they couldn't have thought of something a little simpler than contracting an entire skyscraper to be built on a remote island and putting on a fucking soap opera Broadway show just so the marks can play Castaway for a few days? Just fucking kick one of them in the balls or something, man, and be done with it. No, Jesus. honestly. These guys are playing 5D interdimensional chess using a Ruby Goldberg machine when all they needed to do was walk a ball into a fucking open Oh goal. my God. No, that's fucking hilarious, bro. I that would have pissed me off if I watched it and it went out like that. I it honestly would have pissed me off. Anime that Netflix licenses, but if I had to put it into words, they don't feel like it would have pissed me off. McDonald's chicken nuggets. Doro had Doro just felt so insanely different from anything else I watched this year. If most anime was like taking a stroll down a bright city center, Doro had Doro was the homeless bum trying to stab you when you took the wrong turn in the back alley. <laughs> it wasn't cutesy. It wasn't squeaky what? clean. It was a brutal psychedelic tour through anime's underbelly, and it was awesome. There's something so fascinating about being dropped oh into a God. world that doesn't follow any logic you're familiar with and yet oh. seems to function in a way that makes sense under the foundation it was constructed in. The world of Dodo Hidoro feels absolutely alien. There are sorcerers that can do magic because they have dust in their body. Our main character has a lizard Weird. head and another head inside his head. This man oh, can turn everything around that. him into mushrooms and Gross. the decorator smokes them. We even got Gar Grido preparing for her Hololive debut. Yet somehow Hololive. all this makes sense under the insane logic of its own world. Seeing a universe function under its own twisted sense of coherency just just made me want to learn more about it. Oh, Every episode was just a treat to see a new what side of this fuck? world operate. It was unflinchingly brutal, yet didn't feel out of place when you saw a nine foot talking cockroach wearing Air Jordans called Jordan almost kill a granddad because they're doing a Jun Maeda baseball episode. What? This was one of the most unique experiences you can find in 2020, and oh all my I can God. say is Fucking season two high. better be around oh the corner God. because 12 episodes was not nearly enough to contain the insanity that is Doro Head Doro. Oh my God. Bruh. All right, what's number one? I didn't expect any of these. ReZero? Okay. ReZero is hot. A massively hyped, high-profile sequel comes along years after the original aired, after a myriad wow. of memes, discourse, merchandise, parodies, and spin-offs have warped Parodies. your perception. It can be easy to forget why the franchise became so beloved in the first place. But all it took was a few minutes of the first episode before I instantly remembered. God damn. I fucking missed ReZero. It's a great feeling when a season two yeah. instantly lives up to the hype, but what's even better is when it takes those foundations and builds it into something greater. You want dying? You got more dying. You thought death scenes would become mundane just because Subaru got used to them? Let me nope. introduce you to the Monty Python rabbit. Oh, <laughs> I liked Amelia. Boom. Amelia too. Hell oh, yeah. You liked Rem? <laughs> <laughs> Dirt! <laughs> nah, he enjoyed this too much. Rem 2. But what's the problem was just how oh much better God. we ended up understanding Subaru. He was no longer just an isekai protagonist. He was no longer just a deconstruction of an isekai protagonist. He was mm. a relatable, surprisingly self-aware lad thrown headfirst into a situation way out of his depth. Out of every show on this list, it was the only one that really gave me moments I felt I was going to remember. Ooh, Those moments in anime that ass. hit that perfect crescendo and leave you in a state of shock, awe, amazement, or sometimes tears. These are the moments that remind me why I fucking love anime, and somehow it felt like mm. ReZero was able to do this on a weekly basis. Because those moments were the big feeling I feel was missing from the anime this year. If I had to add one big asterisk to this, is that it feels weird crowning this as my anime of the year. Because, well, it isn't even finished yet. It's not like Attack on Titan Season 3 Part 1, okay, because fair. unlike something like that, we are right in the middle of a story arc. But I had to pick it because I didn't feel like I had any or other Beatrice. choice. Alright, 
let's be real for a second. Last year I said that picking the anime of the year was the hardest in a very long time, but honestly this year was almost equally as hard. For the completely opposite reason. You may notice this year I'm not doing one of my coveted anime in 2020 yearly reviews and that's because to me those videos yeah. always felt like a celebration that puts a personal full stop on my year of anime. But okay. this year it just wasn't something I felt like celebrating. Wow. Obviously I don't think anyone feels like celebrating the year of 2020 mm, in general that's but fair. I also genuinely think that anime as a whole just wasn't very exciting this year. Don't get me wrong, there Ooh. were good shows and I enjoyed every anime on this list, but it felt weird calling any of these a proper anime of the year contender. Some were unfinished or felt more like a setup season, some dropped the ball crossing the finish line, <laughs> and some were missing that X factor to truly leave a special impression. Cause whenever I reflect on a year, I think back to the moments, and aside from ReZero, there were hardly any moments this year that reminded me why I love being an anime fan. Compared to last year, when we had the Demon Slayer episode that broke the internet, Vinland Saga's ending, Mob Psycho's jaw-dropping fights, Seven Page Muda, Isabel's song, Stone Age light bulb, or pretty much every moment from Attack on Titan, I don't know what moments in this year I'm even going to remember. And I don't Crazy. feel like I'm alone in this. Being an anime fan was weird this year because it seemed like there was the least discussion and hype for the medium that I can remember for a long wow, time. Wow, so it went that, that way. doesn't mean we were talking about nothing because if I were to crown my actual anime of the year, it would probably be this. Oh my god. It's don't try to drink my chichi milk. 2020 may not have had a single anime stamp its mark on the year, but when we look back, we are going to remember this year as the rise of VTubers. And yeah, I know this is a complete cop out because this ain't an anime, but let's be honest. This is what a lot of us anime fans ended up watching, and it would feel wrong to is it? them when reflecting back at this year for us weebs. In a time when the entire world had more free time to consume content than ever before, a time when new anime just wasn't up to par, a time that couldn't be more. Chinese Boy, anime fans are nah, they didn't come out in 2020. In their godforsaken plan to watch this, did we do it? Nah, let's watch a bunch of anime girls saying fuck. The bottomless pit uh, uh, of the VTuber rabbit hole came along and swallowed us all into oh its endless abyss, pitting us in the battle of the century. On one hand, we had a lifetime of careful financial decisions and proper money management oh drilled Lord. into us over years of common sense versus some virtual pixels reciting 1 26th of an alphabet. Uh, Guys, uh, it wasn't even close. And I think oh what this really God. cemented was the birth of a proper subculture within the anime fandom. VTubers, gacha games, manga readers, web and light gacha novel readers. Games. I know a lot of people who call themselves anime fans who kept up closely with the culture while hardly watching any anime. I think the best way I can put this is that this was the year where being a weeb was something distinguishable from being an anime fan. Cause mm. while every weeb might be or has been an anime fan, not every anime, anime fan, fan has is been a weeb. weeb. That's true. Yet. 2020 Yet. may go down as one of the worst years in history, but thank God for the virtual anime characters that made our oh, days no. a little less depressing. The future- I didn't know some of these V2 the models moved so much. The future is cute. Anime girls. Oh my and boys, God. and I wouldn't have it any other way. Oh my God, are you serious? Yay! That was Giggle Best Anime 2020. In the intro, I had asked, is this the year where anime had a bunch of dope stuff come out? Or was it the year where the only stuff that came out was things that were already made? And it seems like it was the latter. Giguk said that 2020 had some good anime, but nothing really excited him. Nothing really sat with him. It might have been the, 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 what am I looking for? It might have been the temperature of the year because it was a very difficult year, just worldwide in general. But also, you know, studios were shut down and maybe the best anime weren't being produced and coming out. A lot of people are holding on to their budgets. A lot of people lost their jobs. A lot of people's lives changed forever. And I guess it really did reflect in the anime. But I liked how he touched that his actual anime of the year would be the subculture that was created, aka the attack of the VTubers. I've seen some VTubers. I've heard of VTubers. Hell, I got a VTuber video on this channel. I'm not going to continue the VTuber thing. I'm going to be more me. But the VTuber thing was pretty fucking funny in its own right. It was still funny. I enjoyed it for what it was. Right? So it was very interesting that he felt some of the same sentiments that I wasn't sure which way it was going to go. Lucky for me, the reason we and Giggle don't share the same sentiment, 
Me personally, in 2020, we the reaction channel had been going for what, like a year and a half, two years now. We were still doing backlog anime on top of new anime that was coming out. So in 2020, if you're caught, I don't like, I don't know how to say this. If you were caught up to anime in 2020, like you've been actively watching anime for, let's say, actively watching anime every season for the last three to four years, and you watch all the stuff that you're interested in, when 2020 came around, you probably felt exactly the way Gigguk felt. You probably felt exactly the same way. There was just nothing that jumped out at you because of budget, Roni, all kinds of constraints. It just wasn't slapping. Me personally, the stuff that y'all were watching the last three years, I was catching up to watch. That's what I was on. So that's why I feel like my 2020 anime experience and your 2020 and Giggles 2020 anime experience is probably different. I was still watching classics. We was watching like, no, no, we had already finished Villain Saga. Like we were watching stuff like Overlord. Uh, we caught up to ReZero. So we watched ReZero season one and season two in 2020. Uh, we were watching like a lot of backlog stuff that you guys had already, that a lot of people and a lot of weebs had already consumed. So for me, I look back on the year 2020 anime. I'm like, yeah, I watched a lot of good stuff this year. Why y'all so mad? But it makes sense. It totally makes sense. This was one of his most unique and uh, best of uh, animes ever. A uh, ReZero taking the top stop, ma top spot makes sense, but also doesn't because it wasn't finished. And he admits it wasn't finished, but it was the best thing that was there. JJK was in its first core, so I'm personally surprised it was so low at six. But when you consider everything that was above it, it to be honest with you, a lot of the stuff that was above it is very in line with Giguk's taste and what he enjoys. So that's actually no surprise to me. I probably would have had it in like third or second. Um, I definitely do think that ReZero Season 2 that came out in 2020 was probably better than JJK Core 1. But JJK Core, Core 1 was, kind of, was heat though, I ain't gonna lie. It was pretty heat, but I do think ReZero has it edged out just slightly. Why? Ekana. That's what I'm going to say. If you ain't seen the tea party, hey, we can't even talk. Ekana cut my heart with one cup. That's all it took. That's all it took. Uh, seeing him talk about a great pretender, that actually kind of hurt because I remember I watched a season where he talks about great pretender. He had nothing good to say. He had nothing but good things to say. But I see by the end of 2020, he had finished a great pretender and he had viscerated those last two episodes. I feel like even if I watched it, the way he described that ending, I probably would have felt exactly the same way. Because, like, yeah, hearing what happened in the last two episodes, it's like, yeah, that makes no sense. You got to have the emotional or a logical payoff for them to just start working with the people who scammed you. That's like a Nigerian prince takes you for $10,000. And then he's like, you know what? I feel bad. Let me fly you out to London. We'll go out for lunch or something. And like, he really flies you out to London and goes out to lunch. Would that cost like, I don't know, probably like $1,200 to fly you out and book you up for a weekend? Yeah, I mean, more like 2K, but you still lost 8K to him. Why are you hanging out with this person? Are you stupid or are you dumb? Anyways, I say all that to say, 2020, uh, I, I, I was half right, you know. I thought it might have been a year where there was an explosion of anime because that's what I felt like happened. But I realized that was my perspective because I was behind on anime. I was behind on a lot of goaded things. I was behind on a lot of even mid stuff that, you know, y'all recommend, which ended up being good in my book, but not, but y'all wasn't fucking with it when we was fucking with it. Y'all watch it when it came out two or three years prior. And then when we watch it, like, okay, good, you caught up. Now watch this. It's very interesting, which makes, I say all that to say, I'm excited to see uh, best of 2021 because I know for a fact in 2021, we had a massive bounce back of anime. So I'm excited to see what he thinks about it, how Giggle feels about it. And again, now that I am more aware that I might have been speaking from my perspective, when I see anime 2021, if there's not a bunch of bangers because I'm still watching older stuff, or if there's a bunch of shows, I'm like, this was good, but best of, I'll understand that I was watching different things at different times than you guys. And that's where I'm starting to see it starting to come in right now. Going back and watching these best of, because I was watching new stuff and old stuff, there's years where we're watching new stuff and old stuff, and I thought the old stuff was better than the new stuff. But I, it, it took me to get to this point to even realize that's that's a that's a possibility. Cause like for instance, I think we watched Mob Psycho in 2022. So oh, I think I already did the best of 2022. So why watch Mob Psycho in 2022, right? And 
it's like, yo, that was one of my favorite animes I watched in 2022. But Mob Psycho came out in 2020 or 2019. So I was like, oh shit. Ah, interesting. Just interesting though. Comment down below, what did you think of Giggles Glist for 2020? How did you feel about anime in 2020? Was it lackluster for you also because you were already caught up and everything that dropped was kind of meh? Or did you, or were you like me and you had some backlog stuff to watch so you didn't really notice the lapse? Also, comment down below, who's your favorite VTuber? Because why not? I'm always looking to watch some shit. I'm remain behind the cam. As always, never forget, stay nasty, y'all. You don't go like, oh, right, I'm really fucking shaking, bro.